Now let's look at the drugs that are used in the treatment of cough. Now what is cough? Cough is basically a protective reflex which is manifested as a short explosive expulsion of air which is intended to remove the irritants and accumulated secretions from the respiratory passages. Now when we hear the word cough, we, we think it's a bad thing because it irritates us when we have a cold or a sore throat, but actually it's protective. It is regulated by a center in the medulla. Now there are two types of cough, one is non-productive and the other is productive. The non-productive one is also known as dry cough. Now the dry cough, it needs to be suppressed because it's not protective, it's doing nothing, it's just irritating the patient. It can be because of many drugs such as ACE inhibitors, while the productive cough is due to throat infections, etc. The non-productive should be suppressed while the productive should not be. Why? Because the cough allows the sputum that is produced uh, in the airways to be coughed out and spit it out. Otherwise, it will lead to infections. We suppress the non-productive cough by giving them centrally acting drugs such as antitussives to centrally depress the cough center to stop the cough. And the productive ones are, uh, the productive uh, cough is suppressed by locally acting drugs. The non-productive cough, as I said, is suppressed by antitussives, while the productive cough is suppressed by pharyngeal demulsants, expectorants, and mucolytics. mucolytics. Let's see what sort of antitussives we use. Now, antitussives, first of all, they inhibit the cough reflex by suppressing the cough center in the medulla, and thus they help in the symptomatic treatment of dry cough. They should not be given in children less than one year. Now, the different drugs involved in uh, non-productive antitussives, used in the non-productive cough, sorry, are codeine, falcodine, noscapine, dextromethorphan, and antihistamines. Now the codeine, it is a centrally acting cough suppressant. It can cause drowsiness because it's centrally, act, uh, centrally depressing, cause constipation. Uh, it, its addiction liability is less than that of morphine. It also has mild analgesia. It should not be given to asthmatics because you know you don't want to interfere with anything in asthmatics because you don't know why it, what might trigger the asthma attack. The next one is fall codeine. It is longer acting than codeine and it has no analgesia or addiction ability. Noscapine is potent uh, and it is an opium alkaloid so it should not be given in asthmatics because they can be triggered. It causes bronchospasm. It has no analgesia, addiction or sinus depression effects. The next dextromethorphan is also a centrally acting antitussive agent and it can cause sedation and hallucinations. It doesn't have any addiction or constipation. The antihistamines cause sedation as well as they have, of course, they are antihistamine, so they are anti-allergic and anti-muscarinic. Let's see the pharyngeal demulsants now, which are used in the productive cough. Pharyngeal demulsants such as syrups, lozenges or linctuses can be used. What they do is that they increase, increase the salivation and produce uh, a soothing, soothing effect. What is syrup? It is a concentrate, solu concentrated solution of sugar containing the drug. Lozenge is a solid dosage of uh, the same thing which is sucked and slowly liberates the active ingredient. A li linctus is a local, uh, is a viscous liquid. It is sipped slowly to allow it to soothe the throat. The expectorants now, what are they? They are mucokinetics, that is they let the mucus flow. How, th how do they do that? They decrease the viscosity of the mucus and the cuff becomes less tiring. Th 
thirdly there are mucolytics mucolytics they are mainly uh, the two drugs as mucolytics are bromohexene and acetylcysteine and carbocysteine bromohexene is a semi synthetic drug it is both mucolytic and kinetic it liberates lysosomal enzymes which digests or depolymerizes the mucopolysaccharides and decreases the viscosity of sputum it can cause lacrimation and rhinorrhea acetylcysteine and carbocysteine are used as aerosols and they decrease the sputum viscosity as well their side effects are peptic ulcer and bronchospasm